Welcome back to another technique video. This time we tackle a brick wall effect. Here I've got my cake covered in sugar paste. I think you may be able to guess the theme from the top. I just panelled this one by covering the top first and then the sides. I've shown this method in a few of the previous tutorials. Once your cake is covered, you'll want to measure the height. Here I'm using a quilting ruler and it shows it's almost seven and a half inches high. Put your height into a calculator and divide it by how many bricks high you want. Mine is a tall cake, so I'm going for three. This shows each brick has to be under two and a half inches, as we have to take into account the lines for the mortar in the middle. So on my quilting ruler, I'm going to make each brick around two inch, which should leave enough room. Roll out some white paste, leaving it a little chunky. Cut one straight edge, then line up the ruler to two inch. This is why I love these things, easy to see and measure. Cut as many two inch rows as you can get. Next, line up your paste against your ruler and choose a length for your brick. Two inch across would make a square brick and I wanted chunky rectangle bricks, so I went for three and a half inch. Luckily, they don't need to be perfect or neat as we're going to texture them. Best texture for stone and it's free. Scrunch up some tin foil and roll it to make a mini texture roller. Roll it back and forth for an instant stone effect. Then work on the edges to make them more organic and also the corners. It can be easy to stretch and misshape the rectangle, so keep an eye on the original size. Work on all the bricks and then place your first one in the centre. This will help keep the other bricks equally placed. Then place on all your others around it, following the offset brick pattern. Once you get round the back, you may have spaces. Just cut some bricks to size. If you want a seamless pattern, you can measure the circumference and divide it that way. But I don't mind doing this as there will be additional decorations and moss. Now we want to grunge them up with dirt. I'm covering the whole thing in black airbrush colour. Then take a spray bottle of water and wet the colour. This will make the colour run into all those textured holes and cracks that you made. Using a kitchen towel, blot and wipe off the excess colour. You just want to leave the colour in the texture. It looks more like a stone already. Once it's dried a little, go over the top with your chosen brick colour. This could be black again for a grey brick, red or brown like I'm using here. Or you may want a touch of green for moss. Whilst it's still wet, you can dab gently with the towel to remove bits of colour for extra depth and interest. Finally, add shadow with more black airbrush colour. Just follow the outside of each brick. It will stay wet and glossy looking until you allow it to dry. It can be anywhere from half an hour to several hours, depending on the weather, the temperature, your colour and your paste. Once dry, it turns a little more matte. 
It looks just as effective in grey bricks too, or no bricks at all, and go straight onto the paste like this one. And another with extra texture added by pinching it with your fingers in different channels and shapes. Hope you found it useful, see you next week!